Greetings from Jeannie. You've probably heard that my colleague, Dr. Uliana Dorofiva, has been appointed to the editorial board of the Scientific Journal of Reproduction. Today, I'm speaking with Dr. Ricardo Ash, the magazine's founder and editor-in-chief, to tell you more about some common questions. Hello, Ricardo. I consider it a great honor to speak with you for this interview. I heard you founded the Journal of Reproduction, a scientific publishing house. I want to ask you about this thrilling fact. What is the purpose of the journal itself? Please provide us with a brief explanation about it. First of all, thank you. Thank you for having me uh, in this interview and be interested in the fact of the new journal. Uh, this new international journal is called the Journal of Reproduction. And it is a new uh, avenue for people that work in the field of assisted reproduction to be able to publish uh, and, of course, to read recent advancements in the area of biology of reproduction, assisted reproduction, fertility, infertility, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose <clears throat> of the journal was basically something that I had in mind for many years. Uh, that is to make a very, I don't know if to say democratic journal, but a, but a journal that will be open to everyone in the field of fertility. Uh, personally, I have been in the editorial boards of more than 30 international journals, the best journals in the world, over my time. Mm -hmm. And I learned many things of all the journals. And I believe that many journals today, in 2023, are kind of obsolete, are kind of old in the way that they manage the information. And I feel somehow that there is some kind of discrimination against authors from many, many, many countries in the world. Uh, if you would read any of the most cited journals in reproduction, most articles come from authors from four, five, six countries around the world. And, and I don't think that is correct because I think they are excellent researchers, excellent clinicians all over the world. Uh, not only in the top economic, socioeconomic countries in the world, but I think they are excellent as I said, researchers and clinicians in countries that are considered to be either underdeveloped, underdeserved, third world countries. And in general, the clinicians or researchers, biologists, embryologists in those countries, they are afraid to send manuscripts to those top journals 
because number one, in general, they are rejected, not accepted. And if not, they put them in a long time of waiting that when the things could be published, they are already out of date. So basically the, the idea was to create a journal that will be very quick responding to authors and also to help authors from all over the world. So people will not be of submitting their data uh, and in order to do that, we have created uh, several task forces in within our new journal that will help the authors in the language if they need, in the biostatistics if they need, in the research methodology if they need, so instead of not accepting or rejecting an article, we would like to help them to produce a better article. And that's what we are doing. So uh, that's basically the idea behind your question uh, that we want to make it an open journal. A journal for everybody. A journal that will be part of the transformation of reproduction all over the world. Wow, it is awesome. And who are the editorial board members? Well, uh, <clears throat> I am very fortunate to have over 100 students or disciples in my life that in different countries, they have become the top leaders in fertility. So some of the members of the editorial board are some of those fellows of mine with whom I have a fantastic professional and personal relationship. And others, I selected a group of people of different countries that are not the main countries of those top uh, uh, so if if you want I can name them you know I have the list here I have people from Argentina Dr. Carrere that is a fabulous uh, andrologist and is is uh, the, the leader the center in Argentina that is called Procrearte, that is the top center in Latin America in assisted reproduction. We have Dr. Alexia Chapraduso in Greece, that is perhaps the number one embryologist in the world. I think she's today the, the chair of the Association of World Embryologists. We have two doctors from Israel that are fantastic. One is Yona Barak. Uh, Yona is a fantastic embryologist, creator of multiple new advances uh, in our field. The other one is Dr. Yael Gonen, a clinician that had created many things. In Italy, 
We have in the editorial board, Dr. Andrea Borini, that is a top leader, uh, one of the best uh, fellow students oh. I have ever had. In Mexico, we have a Dr. Barron, that is a top person in Mexico. In Spain, we have the honor to have Dr. Remoji. Dr. Remoji <clears throat> was a fellow of mine, one of the best fellows I ever had. And he became the top leader of EV RMA, that is the top center of fertility in the world. And Dr. Ramoji is the president of all that organization. That is fantastic. Uh, and we have a very close friend of mine, Dr. Anna Vega. Anna Vega was one of the earliest embryologists together with Dr. Edwards and Dr. Lopata and Anna. Uh, has the honor to has been the president of Asia. So people that are fantastic. We have from Ukraine, Dr. Uliana Dorofevieva, that is a, a leader in all the new advances in, in, in projects that are in the world of fertility, such as egg donation, egg banking, uterine surrogacy, uh, third party like mitochondrial transfer, cytoplasm transfer between all sides. So she's a fantastic addition to our group. Uh, and we have Dr. Gautam, from originally from India, but he works in the United Arab Emirates. So we have people from all over. And the important thing of this is that I believe we have created like a dream team. You know, like there was a dream team in basketball, a dream team in football, in dream team. Well, I think we have the dream team of Fertility and Reproduction in the Journal of Reproduction. So this is the editorial board. Recently, we have added to the editorial board another Spanish doctor, Dr. Hosson Orcajadas, that is a very famous doctor in all the, 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 the issues regarding what is called omics in reproduction, in embryologies. Omics means proteomics, metabolomics, genomics, and he's an expert on that. Uh, so we are very proud to have him with us. In addition to the editorial board, that is the main body, we have an editorial committee, form of many, many, many people from all over the world that in general, they are younger people, not so much recognized as the editorial board, which are going to be the first screener or reviewers of the manuscripts that we receive. And uh, then we will see. As I said before, among the editorial board and the editorial committee, we have created task forces by which if an article sent to us from, I give an example from Nigeria, has some issues regarding uh, biostatistics. Well, mm -hmm. that task force will help that author or those authors to correct and help them so it could be published in very high level. Uh, the, the other thing is we have a task force in linguistics. So we could correct if people from, for instance, Latin America want to send articles and they are not so fluent with some 
medical English, it, it, we will help them to correct that and, and so on and so on and so on. So that's basically the, our, the heart, that dream team that I mentioned to you of the editorial board and editorial committee. I absolutely agree with you. This is a real dream team. And I want to ask you, what inspired you to create a magazine? Well, uh, many things. Uh, I had always in my mind, but but most recently, there have been many issues that I noticed that in the classical journals that exist, some topics are for some reason avoided. I give you an example. Maternal surrogacy is a topic that is being performed all over the world. But if you look into all these top magazines, you hardly see any article on maternal surrogacy. Now, why is that? Either because the people are afraid to send this material to those journals, because they will be looked upon like a second class, or the journal doesn't accept those type of articles because of some moral restrictions. Well, I think it's a big mistake. We are going to accept all articles on topics like maternal surrogacy, third party reproduction, fertility and reproduction in the collective LGBTQ plus, that basically you don't, you don't read articles like those in the classical journals. Now we are going to provide an option, an opening to all the people working in those fields to send us those manuscripts. And we're going to make it known to all the people that work in those fields that they have a friend with us. We, we want to produce those articles. Uh, the world is changing and I think we have to adapt to those changes. And that's what we're attempting to do. And I hope that we are very successful. Are there any fascinating scientific projects you have planned for 2023? Well, yes, you know, I tell you it's not easy to create an international journal. And I explain you why. You need a lot of certifications, international certifications, in order to have a journal being approved so people could refer to those uh, articles uh, in other journals or in books or whatever. And uh, we are, we have done a tremendous amount of work to obtain all those certifications from SIMS, from DOI, to obtain from PubMed to MedSearch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not easy, but we were able to, to complete all of this. So this journal will be referenced and will be very popular. That's what we want this to be. We don't want this journal to be like a selected journal only for very particular people. We want this to be, as I said at the beginning of the interview, we want this to be a democratic journal, a journal that goes along with the transformation 
of communications in medicine and other sorts of, of things in life. I appreciate your responses, Ricardo. It is fantastic. I am proud of our collaboration, and OvoGene has a lot of incredible things ahead of it. I look forward to meeting you again. It was really interesting, and I am very proud that my colleague is a member of the editorial board. Our team is thrilled about the upcoming project and is honored to be a part of it.